Hello, Matthew Bell with Alzheimer'sProof.com, and today I wanted to continue a series that I'm doing on installing certain interventions in kitchens, bathrooms, and other places in order to make the environment more conducive to caring for somebody who has Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia or cognitive impairment. So bear in mind that these interventions are designed to be deterrents. They're designed to slow down access to a particular area, maybe a drawer or cabinet, as we'll deal with in this episode here. It will be a drawer lock, but they're not designed to be so foolproof that you could just leave a cognitively impaired person in the environment without supervision. It's definitely not designed for that. It's simply designed so that if the caretaker happens to turn his or her attention away, person who might be cognitively impaired is able to get to a location where there's something there that might be harmful for them, that this particular intervention may be effective way of slowing them down or making noise or doing something to buy time or to draw attention to that person so that the caretaker can resume his or her responsibilities and, and take care of the situation. In this instance, we're going to be looking at a cabinet and drawer lock. Now in another installment I did install the cabinet lock portion. So this is a latch and catch combination that can be used either on a cabinet or on a drawer. So today we're going to put one onto a drawer. In another video I put one onto a cabinet. You're welcome to check that. I'll put the link in the description. First thing I'll say is your particular experience might vary. I was using the safety first cabinet and drawer lock. If you have a slightly different brand, your experience may be a little bit different, but it'll probably be roughly the same kind of an idea. So hopefully this is helpful to you, whether or not you have the specific item that I have. If you're interested in that item, I will also put a link to a resource page down in the description so that you can access and purchase that same item if you choose to do so. Let me show you just some of the tools as I open this package, some of the things that came in and what we will be using today. So I've opened the safety first cabinet and drawer lock container and this is what's in there. I have basically put everything into a sandwich bag just to keep it together. There's a little template. There are seven latches. There are seven catches and then there are actually 28 screws to each uh, for each of the seven latches and to each for every, each of the seven catches. So four times seven. Is 28. You've got, uh, I've got my drill bit set, but I've already selected out the 764 inch drill bit. One of the instructions said to use electrical tape to mark this down 3 eighths of an inch in depth, if you can see that, and I mark that by measuring down the drill bit 3 eighths of an inch, then essentially wrapping it with electrical tape so that when we insert that into the space, it can actually uh, be measured. Um, automatically and then I have the regular Phillips this is a number two Phillips screwdriver Let's see number two Phillips regular handle I got a short handle number two got a mechanical pencil I've got my tape measure and I got my drill and I have the instructions the only thing we really won't be able to use is going to be the drill I wanted to do this without using any special tools and in order to get the drill into the space that we have, in order to drill a hole up into the top of the drawer area, we would need some sort of a right angle adapter or elbow bracket in order to hold the drill bit at an angle because the drill physically will not fit into the space that we have and if we drill in that direction what's going to happen is the drill is going to go in at an angle. So we're going to skip the pre-drilling of the hole. The instructions point this out that it can be a problem. Essentially the only reason to pre-drill the hole is just to get a pilot going so that the screw is easier to thread into position when you're screwing the screw in. But if you use just a little more force using the hand tools that we will be using, the short handled Phillips screwdriver, all should be well and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Now this is the drawer set up here. There are four drawers as you see and in your situation, just as in this situation, it may not be strictly necessary to install a drawer lock on every single drawer. You might have the ability to consolidate so that let's say matches, cutlery, something like this is all consolidated into one drawer and that's the drawer that you want to put the lock on. Another consideration in this case here as I open the drawer you see it's, it's full. If you are in a situation like this, 
it might be tricky to position the catch and the lock so that it is the catch and the latch, excuse me, so that the drawer is able to be opened and closed. Whether you put the latch in the center, whether you put the latch off to the side, it should serve more or less the same purpose. The drawers are tri typically on tracks, and what that means is that the latch, if it's positioned over here, should still do the job of deterring entry into the drawer because the drawer shouldn't really tilt to one side or the other. That's not necessary, in other words, to put the latch right in the center. You can, but it, it shouldn't be strictly necessary because, again, this isn't a foolproof intervention. It's just designed to be a deterrent to make noise to slow the person down. Now in this case, because I'm just doing this for illustration purposes, I'm going to choose a drawer that is easier to to work with in terms of the items that are inside of it. So what I'm going to put it on is going to be this drawer right here. The first step is to try to remove the drawer if you can because it's going to give you more space with which to work. At the very least, you're going to want to empty the drawer if you don't have the ability to remove it. Okay, trying to select a drawer that is easy to see uh, to position the camera. So let's try this one right here. So you can see the drawer just pulls out of position and that is going to open up the space on the top which is what we're going to need to install the catch. So with the drawer removed the next step is going to be to install the catch onto the top of the area of the drawer right here. Now the first part of that step is to pre-drill the holes. However, in a case like this, you can see that the drill is too large to fit into the space. And if I drill it at an angle, which you could potentially do, there's enough wood here, but it will cause the screw to go in at an angle as well. And it might cause the catch to sit funny against the thing. It wouldn't necessarily be flush. So the instructions make mention of this fact and they say drill with a 764 inch sized drill bit if you have room to use it. Then it says note if the drill is too large you can use extra force to manually tighten the screws with a screwdriver and then skip the steps about pre-drilling. So that's what we'll do here. If you want to see how you would use the drill to pre-drill the holes check the video out on the cabinet lock because that is the method that I use there. Now again, these are the materials that come in the package. So this is essentially a catch and a latch, and they go together. The idea is supposed to be that the catch is positioned on the top of the drawer, this on the, on the top here, and then this is going to be positioned on the drawer so that when the drawer is slid in place, it locks into position. Hopefully you can see, see this. So the catch is going to rest on the bottom something like that. We have plenty of room with this short handled screwdriver. You can kind of press the screw into place and then begin to tighten it down. Now we don't want to tighten it down all the way. I'm going to start the other screw on the other side. helps if you can push it into position first. Okay. Now you can see it's not all the way tightened down and the reason for that is we're going to take our template and slide the template underneath there for the next step. Now with the template attached to the catch, we're going to install the drawer again. Right, notice I just slid it off, put the drawer back on, and I'm going to close the drawer, taking off the little piece of plastic, you can see it right here, I'm going to remove this to expose the adhesive on the template. I'm going to slide this back over the catch, same exact thing. Shut the drawer. Here we can see the inside of the drawer. I'm going to show you this here. So unfortunately there's a, there's a lip right here and what's happening here is that the catch, which is supposed to sit right here, is lining up with this, I think, so that the adhesive does not stick to it. But to check that, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of depth to this and I'll let you see how that turns out. Okay, so I have a little piece of cardboard here that I just wrapped in tape and it's approximately the same size as the depth of the lip here that we're dealing with. So I'm just going to tape that onto the drawer. Just using painter's tape. Okay, now I'm going to put this back on. Okay, now I'm going to repeat the operation same as before. Remove the drawer. Okay, now that it's stuck on the drawer, you can see how the holes are marked. We're going to mark the holes for drilling the catch. Okay, now we have plenty of room. You can see that I have marked the drill bit. The first thing you want to do is check for depth. We've got plenty of depth, plus there's an additional piece of wood right here that we're going to actually be drilling into. So I'm just going to drill right through, stopping at where the tape ends. Okay, now I can let some of this fall away since I only needed it to position the latch. Got my latch, got two screws. I'm going to put this on. Let's see, I'm going to start it. I'm going to slide it into the hole. Let's see it. I'm kind of tighten it down, but I'm not going to tighten it all the way. Obviously, we want the catch to be positioned in this direction so that there's a little lip on there and it's going to catch on the catch that we've installed already. Okay. I'm going to tighten it down in the hopes that it will just catch right away. If not, we'll reposition it. Okay, you can see the Latch now positioned. We can't see the catch, but it's under here. So I'm going to close the drawer. Closes all the way, and when I pull it out, the latch catches. And we know we have it positioned adequately. In order to open the drawer, you have to press down. Okay, the very last step is just going to be to tighten it and permanently position it into place. I'm trying to let you see it at the same time as I... Screw down. Okay. Put it in there again. You can see it. The latch is tight. Catch is tight. And as you slide the drawer forward, you can see it. Hear it catch. And it catches. You can see the little finger depression area there. In order to open the drawer, you need to press down, hold it kind of in. Let's see if you can see it. Press down and the drawer will open normally. Just a word. The catch again and latch combination is designed to be a deterrent, not a foolproof intervention. It is no substitute for diligence and vigilance in terms of watching your loved one with a cognitive impairment. You can't count on the catch and the latch combination to prevent them from injuring themselves if they were to access a drawer with matches or cutlery or chemicals or any of that kind of thing. Now you saw me have to add on a little piece because of the design of our drawer. Basically that should not be necessary. It was not necessary on the cabinet. The little template is designed with its adhesive to stick on a flat surface so as long as the interior of the drawer is flat, mine wasn't flat, but if it is flat it should be no problem. Uh, the problem was is that the adhesive wasn't sticking to it because there was, n there was no material there because of a depression. So if you found something of value in this video please like it, subscribe to the channel. I have another video again where I install the same combination on a cabinet. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to install a guardian or a door lock, which is designed to add a layer of security onto the door. Number one, it can be a theft deterrent, but number two, and most uh, particularly for this channel, it's designed to restrict access 
to the outside. And that, I think, is one of the very best interventions that I'm aware of. I installed it before on many, many doors, and it is it works very well. And I'll show you how that works in a subsequent video. Please check back for that. Thank you very much for joining me today.